Hi everyone, welcome back. I have a stamp from Blue Night Rubber Stamps. This is one that I just love. It is called Willow Lake. And I already made one card front with it. Let me show it to you guys. And I used some of the Arteza markers, some Zig markers, and some, can you see the sparkle in there? Some of the Spectrum Noir sparkle pens. I don't know if it's going to show up. There you go. So you can see it ha definitely has that watercolor feel to it. When you see that sparkle, it really does look like water. And then I cut out the boat and put that over top. So, you know, I was thinking, how else can I color this? I could color it with um, actual watercolors. I could color it with color pencils. I could do watercolor pencils. Um, I could do pan pastels. And then I thought, you know, I really just love the boat. Like I'm really get jonesing for spring. I'm getting cabin fever. I can't wait to get out and go fishing again. So I thought, why not do the spotlight technique? Now I have never done the spotlight technique. Um, Shirley Q, who is also on the Blue Knights Rubber Stamps, did one not too long ago. And I just remember how beautiful it was. So I am going to attempt to do the spotlight technique. And Hopefully you guys will come along for my journey on the first time doing that. So I'm using a piece of Nina Solar White. This is our Classic Crafts 80 pound. Um, it's cut down to five and a quarter by four. I'm gonna put the stamp down in the corner there. I took the foam mat out, okay. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to color this yet, so I'm gonna use some Brutus Monroe Detail Raven ink because if I decide to do alcohol markers, it'll be fine. If I decide to do watercolor markers, it will be fine. Um, just works with everything. Now, I gotta stamp it a couple times. That's why I have it in my little mini Misty here. So what is the spotlight technique? The spotlight technique is where we are going to basically pick an area that we want to spotlight. We're gonna color that area and we're gonna leave everything else black and white. Okay, so if you are ever in a hurry and you wanna make a quick card, um, it's a very artistic way of making it stand out. All right, so I want that a little darker. I totally missed the trees right there. Okay, I think we'll go in again. My card panel is a little large. We'll cut it down. I Like I said, it's a piece of five and a quarter by four Nina Solar White. And I like to make it a little larger. That way if I stamp it crooked or if I don't color it exactly perfect, I can cut off the edges and straighten it out. Pretty darn good. I think we'll leave it there. Move this out of the way. All right, I'm going to take my heat gun to it and um, set it. ways you can do the spotlight technique. You can do it directly on your card panel or you can color another image, cut it out and put it over it. I'm going to do it directly on this panel. I'm going to go with my Arteza colored pencils here. Oh, Got to move Baby Joy out of the way. I've had so much fun with this little Cricut. I'm not even going to take it off my desk. I love it too much. No room for my pencils. Okay. And I will link the pencil case and the pencils for you. 
All right, let me grab some Gamsel. Okay. And what we need to do is first, we need to pick an area that we're going to color. And I'm gonna do this kind of in a little cheat way here. I am going to take a post-it note. And this is one of those full sticky post-it notes. So it has the sticky almost all the way around. Going to take this two inch circle punch. You could use a die. And I'm going to slide this in and hopefully get this to punch pretty much in the center. I do not want to rip that. All right, now in this case, I want the outside. We can keep the circle mask for one of our little moon scenes. And now I'm going to just put the um, mask around the part of the image that I want to spotlight. Okay, so I'm gonna spotlight our boat here. And very carefully put this down all the way to the edge there. And now I'm only going to color this area here. So I think I will start with the water. I kind of like how I colored it here where it's not really blue. It's kind of mossy looking like there's some algae on there. That's what it looks like, a slow little pond. So I wanna kinda of stick to that color scheme. I want it a little bit blue, but a little bit green. Um, let's try a little bit of this olive green. It might be a little too dark. We'll put that under the boat as a shadow. And then maybe we'll move out to a little bit lighter green, greenish blue. What color is this? Basil green? Yeah, that's not too bad. So all around the boat. And again, I'm gonna get the gamsel out and I'm going to spread this out. And I wanna stay in our circle here, just like a spotlight. This would be a really pretty night scene too. I should have thought of that, but I didn't. So this is all our water here. Now, here, this is kind of green grass, so I will change that up in a second. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to this. A turquoise. Turquoise, perfect. So we have kind of this bluish greenish water. Okay, now we have our grass. This is a really simple scene to do. This is a uh, forest green. Okay, we have our pier. Coyote brown, which is a greenish brown. I'm just gonna put that in a couple places in our water here. Okay. Now for our pier, I want our pier to look old and like I did in the other one, kind of gray. You know, it's been out in the sun. I don't want the brown to distract from our boat, so I'm going to color our pier in gray. So this is called koala gray. A little bit of a different color contrast there. This is pewter gray, which is a little darker. Okay, and then we are going to paint our boat. Instead of brown, I'm thinking dark red. 
This is an old boat. It's been painted a few times. So I want to go in almost like a dark or like a barn red. Garnet red. Let's try this. There we go. Oh, I colored some of our boat brown. I mean blue. There we go. Okay. And a little bit darker inside the boat here. Chocolate brown. And I think that's it. Really simple to do, but hopefully it'll make a huge impact here when we go to reveal it and take all of the masking off. Okay, so I'm going to start with my little red stump here. And the gamsel just smooths that out. It's almost like I colored it with markers, but I did it. the other end I have brown so we'll do that in there. Also going to do our little shadow under the boat here. Okay and I need to do gray on our little pier. The other thing is sometimes you don't have a lot of time to color. Maybe you don't want to color a whole image. I mean, these images are really easy to color, but there's so much little detail just in that little boat um, that I really wanted to focus and highlight that area. So now I'm going to go in and blend all of our kind of our pond water here. You'll be able to tell when the gamsel dries out because you'll notice that it just doesn't blend as easily. When that gamsel is fresh on your stump, everything just blends easily. Look at the top of our image versus the bottom of our image. You can see where the gamsel blended smoothly up here and down here there hasn't been anything used. So it's a big difference in using gamsel with your color pencils. And I like these color pencils because they're really inexpensive, guys. This is like my go-to when I want to color something quick, easy, such a variety of colors, and I didn't spend a ton on any of these supplies. Okay, so then once I'm done with the water, pretty happy. Everything blended so nice. Oh, I love it. Okay, now I need my green because I'm going to do my grass. I may go in and add more detail with the grass just because, you know, it's not going to be smooth. But water is smooth. So I think I'll go in with some darker colors and add some more in here for our grass. This is called jade green. It's a really dark, dark green. And all I'm doing is just, again, imitating that we have grass coming up here. And I'm barely going to blend that out. So I do like the detail there. So maybe I'll just blend it out in here, but I'm very, very lightly touching it. I want the detail of that grass to show that it is different than the rest of the scene. Okay, hopefully this will look okay. We have a little tear in our little bottom of our post-it there, but. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Let me cut this down. Let's put it on a mat and see what it looks like. So I'm gonna cut this down now to five by three and three quarters. So we're gonna cut off the side here. 
and it did not take a long time it did not take a lot of effort very easy to do so like I said you want to make a handmade card you want to do it quick really really easy way of doing it don't have to color the whole image okay if you want to put your sentiment on there you can let's see dark green. I would love to put a dark green mat behind that. Oh, there we go. That is almost perfect. Okay, so we're going to cut this to five and a quarter by four. And then we put it on our card front and we're done. too much glue in that corner just do that with it that way it's in the middle of the card and not on the edge why does it look like I did not cut that straight whoopsie that is definitely not cut straight okay let's line up this edge over here that is not straight at all okay so this side is straight on the right. The left side is crooked. Oh, sure is. There we go. side okay now it's beautiful ready to go just put that on a pre-made card front like that what a cute card in that make a beautiful masculine card like I said a get well card thinking of you card sympathy card I mean you can put that with anything that's such a beautiful image and like I said this image would look good even if you did it as a moonlit nighttime scene put the moon over here make everything dark dark water that would have been pretty so here we go two two cards one stamp again the name of the stamp is called Willow Lake it is from Blue Night Rubber Stamps I will link everything I use down below for you again Blue Night Rubber Stamps has these beautiful hand-drawn images that are very easy to color with a different number of different mediums I mean here you can see they did this kind of sunset sky mountains in the background um, you know whatever you want to do there Willow Lake, it's called. Um, they also have a YouTube page, a YouTube channel. If you want to check that out again, it's Blue Night Rubber Stamps. Here is my first rendition done with the watercolor markers. Some shimmer pen there. There you go. And then here is my second one using the spotlight effect. All right. So there you go, guys. If you have any questions, post them in the comments down below. Again, I will link everything I used in the description for you. If you like this video, I appreciate your thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and keep on stamping. Bye-bye.